morning, sawdust eaters. <laughs> I was thinking about that last night. I've thought about it many times out on these jobs, you know. I'm running my meal, whether it's for myself or for someone else, I'm eating sawdust. And these things here, you know, they help with the big chunks. <sighs> yeah, they're not an N100 respirator. And there are times when I really should be wearing my N100 and I always forget to bring it. I wear it planing and doing all kinds of sanding and things in the in the uh, shop. But uh, I always forget to bring it out on these jobs. And, you know, so for anybody who's curious, it's not because I think it's cool not to wear one. <laughs> it's honestly because I just forget to bring the dang thing. And, you know, I usually have one of these around. So the funny thing is I bought these originally for uh, working on my tractor up at the property. And, you know, if you're working the dirt up there in July and August and September, oh, it's it's horrendous. It's it's We call it moon dust. It's like talcum powder. And it just gets everywhere. And so I thought, you know, I bought a half dozen of these and I thought it would help me not breathe so much dirt uh, out working on the property. And, well, they don't really work. So, <laughs> They ended up being uh, kind of there if I needed them because I had no other options and most option I have no other options and so I wear them. But anyway, these kind of work a little bit, you know, they they keep the big chunks out. They, they kind of keep it down a little bit so I'm not blowing as much sawdust out of my nose. But back on track, the point of what I was saying is uh, I uh, often think about it, you know, there's smoke eaters. Well, guess what? They're sawdust eaters. Are you a sawdust eater? There's also people that have sawdust in their veins. And I'll tell you, if you're a sawyer, you're a sawdust eater and you got sawdust in your veins. Speaking of which, I've got to get my lube up done real quick this morning and get cracking and, and get back to work. So I'm going to I'm gonna get back to getting this mill ready to go today. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning. Beautiful, beautiful morning here. Gosh, it's gorgeous out here. It's awesome. Sun's just sitting up there, warming us up a little bit. Man, it's awesome. It's good to be out here. So, if you ain't milling, well, I don't know. Maybe you're missing it. Maybe you're not. If you're waiting on a mill, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I did talk to Wood Miser. I stopped by Wood Miser just for fun, uh, which turned out to be more than just for fun for me. I, I ended up talking to James and getting some support. And thank you, James, for all your support. You're awesome. But I know they're just as frustrated as you are, probably maybe even more frustrated. In fact, I'm sure they're more frustrated than their customers are, honestly, because they've got all these customers and they can't get engines. So I know it's very frustrating for Woodmiser, and, and I just thought I would toss that in there, just something to think about. Meanwhile, let's get back to making sawdust. I want you to pay attention, and you're gonna notice that I make a common mistake when milling from the big end. Now, you've probably heard me say in the past that I actually like to mill from the big end on big logs. But on the smaller stuff, I prefer the small end near me. Partly because logs seem to cut better when you're cutting from the small end. However, on these remote milling jobs, the customer doesn't always have the logs in a position that you can always mill from one end or the other. Even when you advise customers on how to stack logs, the reality is if you're not there helping them, they're gonna do the best they can, and I find that the vast majority of my customers do a great job of getting logs decked up for me. They're just not always the way I would do it personally, and that's okay, and that's one of the challenges of being a remote sawyer is that you have to actually understand that the customer is going to do the best they can to get ready for you and you can do your best to try to educate them on how to get ready. But folks, it is what it is. Sometimes it just doesn't work that way. Maybe they didn't quite understand or they didn't have the room or, or the tools or equipment in order to get the logs a certain way for you, especially when you prefer one end for one size log and the other end for the other size logs like I do. You know, I want the big end towards me on big logs so that I can make sure that I can clear the log when I go by, rather than entering the log on the small end, getting two thirds of the way down or something, and then running my guides right into the bark and having to stop, shim up the cap cut, try to get the head back and clear the obstruction with a chainsaw. So watch along as I mill this log and see if you see what I did. And I'll talk about it a little bit later. I'm gonna let this run. When I come back, I will explain what I did and how I fixed it. So see if you can catch my little mistake <laughs> it happens, folks, and I'll talk about it a little bit further down the road.
All right, did you see what I did? <laughs> I rolled the log over, took the cap cut, but there's a little bit of a problem here. Yes, folks, I've done it again. I left the tow board roller up. I haven't quite noticed it yet, but I'm gonna see it here in just a minute. I'm going ahead, I roll over the cant, and I get some bark under it. So I've gotta go ahead, clean some bark out. I realized when I cleaned it out of the side there that I had some underneath, so I go ahead and lift it up. And I'll walk down and I'll clean the rest of it out. And right there I'm going, damn it! <laughs> All right, push the cat back towards the head. I like it a little closer to me anyway. Set her back down. And I started to position the log. I was thinking I'd go ahead and mill that side. So I went down and I checked the other end, figured out what height I needed to go to. And I realized right about there that I ought to flip it back over again. There's a lot more wean on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead, flip it over, make sure my tow board roller is down again. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I'll take this one out, and I'll start by taking out a bit of a wedge cut here. You notice I'm a little bit deep right there, about an inch and a half. So we're going to run down about two-thirds of the log. Come back, drop it again, and get all the way to the far end. Now that'll give me a flitch cut, but we could just cut the far end off. We come right out to the end. Look at all that sawdust flying. That's because I was skimming off the top. Now I know this side is good. It's nice and flat, no wedge. I just got to flip her back over again. Once I got it flipped over, then I was able to go ahead and I can mill this side. Now I can go ahead, take another cut out, another one by. Look at the sun coming off all that sawdust. It's a beautiful morning. And away we go. So we lost a little bit on this one. It does happen, unfortunately. <laughs> Sometimes that's just the way it goes. We'll get this one finished now, though. Dang it, I've got to stop doing that. The funny thing is, I really don't do it that often, but every once in a while I do, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I do it, I'm not going to hide it. I'll let you know, this old jarhead does make mistakes. I'm human, after all. All right, we're getting it down to a point now that we can go ahead and get those off the deck and, and pull the flitches up so that we can mill those down. We'll get the flitches milled and then we'll be able to finish this one off.
I just push those out of the way. That way the off bears can grab them and we'll go ahead and finish this cant out. So folks, it does happen. And if you want to see another video about doing this same thing and how I fixed it, a bigger problem, I'm going to drop that video right here. So go and watch that one and you can see what I did to fix this same problem previously. Thanks for watching. The old Jarhead out.